Started by Carl Linnaeus in the mid-1700s, animal taxonomy has been a constant topic of discussion in the scientific world. Originally, taxonomic differences were based on phenotypic variations in animals, but thanks to DNA, taxonomy can now be redefined based on genetic differences. This project focuses on primate taxonomy regarding Goldie's marmoset, or Calamico Goldie. Before we dive into the argument about the Goldie's marmoset, we will first briefly review primate taxonomy. Primates is our order, and that order is divided into two suborders, Haplorini and Strepsorini. Strepsorini is divided into two infraorders, Lemuriformes and Larissiformes. And Haplorini is divided into three infraorders, Tarsiaformes, Platerini, and Caterini. For the Calamico, we will continue down the line of Platerini, which is divided into two families, Cividae and Calatricidae. All the Platerines live in the New World, generally from Mexico in the north, generally Argentina in the south. The Cebids are generally larger than the Calatricids, and the Calatricids are much smaller, and they include marmosets and tamarins. Calamico Goldie is somewhat of a mystery in the primate taxonomic world, because primatologists currently argue as to where it belongs, either in the Cebid family, Calatricid family, or its own family, Calamaconidae. They are a monotypic species, meaning they are only a genus with one species, themselves. We as humans are also monotypic, although evolutionarily this was not always the case. Where the confusion arises is in the characteristics the Calamico hosts. A variety of physical features of the, the Calamico make it look remarkably close in relation to the Calatricids rather than the Cebids. However, there are multiple similarities and differences the Calamico has with Calatricids and the Cebids, and we will now look at these features and examine its taxonomic placement. One of the primary defining features in primate taxonomic separation is dentition. Humans and all other catarines have a dental formula of 2123. All the Calatricids have a dental formula of 2132, while the Cebids have 2133. The Calamico has a dental formula of 2133, making it more closer to the Cebids. A different aspect of dentition places the Calamico in closer relation to the Calatricids, and that dentition is reflected through their diet. The Marmosets and some other Calatricids eat a lot of exudates, and as a result, they have developed forward facing incisors specialized to tapping through bark. The Calamico has similar dental morphology. Historically, dentition has proved to be an important factor in determining taxonomy. This is based on the fact that evolutionarily, teeth take a very long time to change. Some primatologists use this reason to group the Calamico underneath the Cebid family, while others say that when the Calatricids broke off from the Cebid branch, they only had two molars, and that the Calamico is an older branch that retained this feature. Weighing in at an average of 360 grams, the Calamico is much more similar in size and shapes to the Calatricids rather than Cebids that can weigh in at around 7 kilograms. Related directly to this small stature and size, a recent study published by the American Journal of Primatology found that the resting metabolic rate of the Calamico is much similar to other Calatricids. For the Calatricids, small body size has proved a difficult problem in birthing because their babies, like all other mammals, have to be substantially formed by the time of birth. They have evolved to give birth to twins on nearly every occasion to combat this issue. However, like the Cebids, the Calamico gives birth to single babies per gestation which can end up weighing nearly a quarter of the mother's weight at birth. Another similarity to the marmosets and tamarins is the Calamico's niche in the ecosystem. These animals fill the role of small birds in the tropical Amazonian rainforest by living in the primary understory, preying on various arthropods, fruits, and exudates, and by being diurnal. In comparison, seabids, like howling monkeys and spider monkeys, occupy different niches. Another way to identify present relationships amongst primates is to look at the fossil record and try to identify ancestral similarities and differences. This practice has helped us humans with our ancestral relatives in identifying bipedalism and other traits that developed around 6 million years ago and separated us and chimpanzees at our last common ancestor. Unfortunately for most of all of the New World monkey fossil record, there is virtually no specimens. This is directly related to high acidic levels in the tropical rainforest ecosystems. These high acidic levels in the rainforest soils leads to quick breakdown of organic material and often leaves no fossil evidence. Let us now summarize each side of this argument. In argument of favor of placing Goldie's marmoset in the Cebidae family, there are three main reasons. First, that because the Calamico only has two molars, they are more similar to the Cebids. The second reason is that the Calamico does not twin like other Calatricids. And lastly, because historically the Calamico has been grouped within the Cebids, they should remain so for simplicity. In favor of the Calatricid grouping, primatologists point to three main reasons. First is that the Calamico has a similar dental morphology to the Calatricids for harvesting exudates. 
Second is that the Calamico has similar body size, shape, and resting metabolic rate to Calatricids. And lastly is that the Calamicos occupy similar ecological niches to marmosets and tamarins. Hopefully, many of you out there are thinking that something key to assessing evolutionary relationships is missing. DNA testing! Fortunately, mitochondrial DNA testing of the Calamico has recently conclusively placed it evolutionarily in between the marmosets and the tamarins. So if there is conclusive evidence solving this taxonomic problem, why is there still confusion in textbooks and other sources about where Goldie's marmoset belongs? Well, unfortunately, conclusive DNA evidence does not change taxonomic placements, for it is scientific opinion rather than facts that establishes these relationships. Personally, after all the evidence presented, I believe the Calamico represents an older branch than the Calatricids, one that broke off earlier from the Cebids. Because of this, I believe it deserves its own family, Calamiconidae. Regarding reluctance to change primate taxonomy, many scientists do not see the urgency in changing the relationships. They believe that primates, a marmoset no less, will have no immediate or drastic changes to their everyday life or way of living. Although some of this is true, in principle this belief is egotistical and non-stewardship-like. In fact, there is much urgency and emphasis in acknowledging the Goldie's marmoset because it is currently listed as an endangered species, like most other primates, due to vast rainforest deforestation and subsequent habitat fragmentation. If we do not change our actions and beliefs regarding primate importance, we will soon lose them all. To conclude, Goldie's marmoset deserves its own taxonomic family, Calamiconidae, because this change more accurately represents the current DNA relationships amongst Cebids, Calatricids, and the Calamico. This change will hopefully raise awareness and will be the last straw in shifting human actions and efforts into saving other primates and this planet.